Alright. A lot of uh, requests from a lot of young, new artists, and they kind of want to know how to start doing digital art. So, I want to make a video about it. Now, I'm assuming you already have the basics. You have a computer, you have a tablet, and you have some type of art program. So I'm just going to give my five tips on how to get started in digital painting or digital art. Start traditionally. Kind of counterintuitive. What I mean is when you open your first program, go up to File Import or just click and drag some art that you already have into the program so you can use that as a starting point. For example, I have this pen here. I drew it traditionally just using uh, a marker real quick scanned it in and now I'm working on it. So it's just good to kind of start with a foundation, something that you already know that works. Tip number two, use layers. Layers are pretty much the building blocks of the artwork when you're working digitally. So you're going to want to make layers based on what you need and also name those layers so that you know what you're looking at. First thing I did was bring in my traditional work, change the opacity so that it's a lot lighter, and then make a layer above it and call it line or whatever you want to call it, and then putting down my line work on that new layer. If you're unfamiliar with layers, you just need to think about them as tracing paper that you're putting on top of another sheet of paper. When you make a new layer, it'll be completely transparent and it's not showing anything. But as you add things to that layer, it, you can create some really complex, detailed artwork. When you're working with layers, you just need to understand layer hierarchy. The same way if you had a bunch of tracing paper stacked on top of one another, the one on the top would be the one you'd be able to pay the most attention to. Digital layers work that same way. The ink layer I'm making, I set it to multiply. That's a blend mode. If you go to your where your layers are set up, there should be something that specifies layers. Multiply, I couldn't really explain to you what multiply does, to be honest, but I kind of know what the, the result it has and their hierarchy. So just going in on my line layer, I kind of went in very loose and then I tighten things up as we go. Next tip, create a color layer. When coloring, I make a layer below my line layer. I turn my traditional layer, I eyeball it off so that it's invisible, no one can see it. I go in with a paint bucket tool and I set it so that I set it to all layers. That's usually a setting right under your paint bucket tool. Um, usually it's at the top, sometimes it's on the left as you see on mine. If you're familiar with paint bucket, what it does is fills up an area with a color. And if you set it to all layers, then it takes all layers into consideration when considering what an area is. Because of that, it's taking my line layer into consideration when it's deciding what an area is. So you just take your time to make sure your lines are crisp, nice where you need them, and that you don't leave any open gaps so that it doesn't confuse the program. But if you make any mistakes, you feel free to control Z. Also, working with a bunch of these layers your first time, you're naturally going to be drawing on a layer and then find out later that you are actually on the wrong layer and that you're messing something up. But that just comes with practice, don't worry about it. Next tip is shadows. I make a shadow layer. I get one of my art tools that's very, with very uh, fuzzy edges with a strong feather. So sometimes there's a spray can tool or sometimes there's a paintbrush that you can use that has really light edges. And I just kind of go around and add shadow where I feel like they're needed. And then I go with my eraser tool and erase the shadows that I feel like aren't needed. Or I erase areas where it either goes off the image or where I feel like there will be highlights just to tie, tie it up a bit. I set that layer to 50% opacity and give it a multiply as well so that way it's a little bit lighter. Also with multiply layers, if you draw something with white on a multiply layer, you won't see the white. I wish I could explain why that is. I don't know why it is, but that's how it works. Trust me on that. Also, the good thing about working digitally is that you can select different elements of different layers and edit them, change them up. That's a little bit more advanced. I'll explain that in another video. So feel free to zoom in, get really close to the area that you're trying to work on and make any changes needed. I feel like this pan has had needed a little bit of tilting and a little bit of a bill. So I just went in and changed that. And the trick is just to go through all my different layers to make sure that those changes are consistent throughout. Next is highlights. So this is going to be another blend mode, but what you want to do is make another layer, call it highlights or light, and figure out where your light's coming from and what color that light would be. And then highlight your character where you feel like those lights would hit. In this example, the light's going to be coming from behind the panda. so 
he's kind of going to have this outline around him to show that the light's kind of behind him. I'm just coloring it all in red because I want it to be a red light. I'm going to maybe move some shadows around to accommodate the light source and then change the blend mode so that it kind of blends in or affects the layers underneath in a way that I like. So I settled on hard light and that's actually the one I usually recommend. If you, for your highlights, I'd recommend using screen, soft light, overlay, or hard light, depending on how strong or what color your highlights are gonna be. Go in, tidy those up, make sure that everything looks, looks all right. Yeah, and just try to keep things tidy. I mean, that's pretty much my basic tips. There's gonna be, I'm gonna still add some type here and kind of change the perspective so that it fits, but I think I'll explain that in another, another video. I said this video is just for people just starting off in their digital work. There's just a couple tips to get you up and moving. I know that starting off in a new program and a new medium can be pretty intimidating. So this is just my way of giving some advice. If you come up with your own uh, some tips that you want to share with me, please feel free. I'm still learning myself. If you like this video and want some more tips, please subscribe so that you can stay up to date and I'll see you next time. Thank you everybody for watching our video. Please check out these other cool videos you see on your screen. You can help Scattered Comics and its creators by going to the description below and purchasing any of our cool stuff. Give our video a like and don't forget to subscribe.